Crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a card that I did make for the Coffee Lovers blog hop which ended last week but I didn't get to share the video. So it features some Picket Fence Studios, some Cat Scrappiness, and some Lawn Fawn. A bunch of companies that I love kind of all pulled together here. So I'm using this bunny from the Picket Fence Studios Peach and Piper stamp set as well as the layered coffee cup die cut from Cat Scrappiness to get started. I, it, sorry, the coffee cup does have like a sleeve and so the die cut that you layer underneath also kind of has these little bump outs for where the sleeve goes to kind of let you know, but I don't want those. I want to just decorate the coffee cup. And so with that in mind, I trimmed off those edges a little bit and then I did add the top part of the coffee cup. There are a few extra pieces, so you can kind of layer them in a way that suits you, but I just did the most basic detail because I'm really trying to focus on the decoration of the cup. Also here, I find it helpful, and I think this is more of like a me problem than anything else, but like lining up the dies perfectly doesn't always work for me, so I just trimmed off any of the extra there after I placed the lid on the coffee cup. And now I want to figure out where I want to put my bunny. With the coffee cup die cut, it's going to be a little bit harder to make sure it goes back in the same exact place in the Misty because I am going to stamp a few of these. I ultimately made four of this card and that was in part because I wanted to practice some no line coloring. I am using Desert Sand Memento ink and I'm stamping on a craft card stock. I don't actually know which craft card stock this is. It may be the Nina Desert Storm. I but um, I just wanted to kind of play around with something different with my Copics this week. So here are the um, little uh, embellishments at the top. And I glued those down with Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And I was not happy. Uh, when it leaked out the edges, it made like discolored little like goobers. I don't even know what you call them. But I much prefer multimedia matte, personally. Um, it was clogged at the time, but I'm going to unclog it because I, I did not prefer the Tombow. Because I'm no line coloring, I did still want you to be able to see the eyes of the bunny and his nose and his little like eyelash, like some of the details from the stamp set. So with that in mind, I took my sepia Copic liner and before I started doing any of my other coloring, I traced over those details. I learned from the first time that I colored it that all the browns that I layered over the bunny, I just lost all that detail and trying to restamp it was really tricky. So that was kind of my solution for how to keep the most important detail. Uh, Copic multi-liners are Copic safe so they won't smear. It, most pens um, are water-based or a lot of pens out there like Pit Artist pens and like, you know a lot of the pens in my collection would have just smeared and you would have to do it at like the end of the Copic coloring. But by having a Copic multi-liner I was able to trace at the beginning. So I used black, or uh, sorry I have black and brown for that reason. I'm coloring with the E2s, so E25, 23, and 21. Copics will, when you color them on craft, they don't, they're not as dark as they would be on white. So I am by no means an expert in how to no line color. In fact, one of the reasons that I did this card and that I made multiples of it was because I wanted to practice my no line coloring. And and that was partly inspired by Kathy Rakusen's 30 day coloring challenge that's happening right now and was happening last week when I made this card. I want, you know, I want to have fun coloring, but also, you know, have a challenge would, I thought would be a, a way to have fun coloring. I am trying not to make my shadows too dark, especially on his face. I really want there to still be some contrast. And I think that that's maybe a bit more challenging to do when you're doing no line coloring because, uh, sorry, coloring on craft, um, because there's already so much color underneath them. So you have to be a little bit more careful about your shadows. I'm also using the E25 to really kind of define some of the lines. And so I'm not using it as much 
as a layer of color as as like an outline and I am also going back in with the sepia pen to kind of enhance any areas where I felt like the no line coloring took too much away or if I needed it to be a little bit darker but rather than letting that E25 be like a big blending area it's mostly just a line around the stamp lines for me and I felt like that worked out well. Normally to color the inside of ears I'd use something really light like uh, an R00 or even triple zero like super light but on craft card stock it just looked like the paper was wet and there was no color so I had to go all the way to like the R80s which is another um, pale pink color and once I had the cup colored I knew I wanted to do a simple but pretty background so I went to the star fusion die it's a cover plate die so it covers your entire card also from cat scrappiness and I spritzed it with some shimmer spray because this is a holiday card and I love shimmer spray at the holidays. I don't use a lot of glitter or shimmer, but at Christmas I tend to. And then I picked a sentiment from the Lawn Fawn Merry Messages stamp set. When you're, uh, just a little thing that I did off screen, but when I cut that Star Fusion cover plate, I used one of those roller tools that help you get all the little bits out of your uh, die cut. Mine's from Sizzix. Whichever one you get, I'm sure they all work pretty much the same, but it's just like a really stiff bristles. You can roll over it and it helped me because I had to die cut four of them. And this time I was smart enough to use my red cardstock instead of making my own red cardstock. So I saved myself a lot of time there versus a video I did last week where I did a lot more of my own coloring of cardstock. And then here, I was able to stamp the sentiment in Versamark ink and I'm going to white heat emboss it so that it really stands out. There was no black on this card and using the craft I just felt like stamping in black ink wouldn't have looked right. I like the combo of red and craft and white. So um, because I'm mass producing the card I could also do like all of the stamping at the same time which I think for the other three cards that I did I was I did do it all at the same time, but this one I was trying to finish like while there was still time in the um, the Coffee Lovers block hop. So I felt like there was like a lot of blank space on this coffee cup. And I thought like, well, I could have put the sentiment maybe on the coffee cup. Um, obviously, I already stamped the sentiment, but, you know, I was considering it. I just felt like it wouldn't quite have made sense. Like I was trying to make it look like a genuine cup you might get at a coffee shop. And so I thought some little white detail would be great. Um, of course your coffee cup, you know, your to go coffee cup from the coffee shop probably wouldn't be heat embossed, but some, you know, white snowflakes on there. And I have no luck with white pigment ink. I know there's some out there and some people like it, but I have no luck with pigment ink, period. I probably should have tried the Distress Oxide White because I get better drying with that than I do with like anything else. Uh, but Yeah. I, I didn't at the time, but yeah, I wanted to incorporate that white. So I stamped some white snowflakes. They're also from the Merry Messages stamp set from Lawn Fawn. The Peach and Piper set, set that the bunny is from is not a Christmas set, but I was happy to be able to combine some Christmas products with some non-Christmas products to make a holiday card. So here, I know that I'm going to cover up some of the background with the coffee cup and with my sentiment. So with that in mind, I did put some layers of my really strong ATG tape and I just placed it in the areas that I knew the coffee cup and the sentiment would go. And I knew that would help hold down this relatively delicate die cut and I wouldn't have to glue it as well potentially. And I am dotting some Tombow Mono Multi at this point, I hadn't yet realized the like little bits it was leaving behind and it didn't seem to be as much of a big deal on the background. For whatever reason on the white coffee cup lids, it was really noticeable and made me just, you know, decide I'll use Tombow Monomoti for other things. It just wasn't for those little detail images for me personally. Um, and so now, yeah, you can see that that adhesive is 
sticking through and wouldn't look good except for it's about to be covered anyway. And it's really helping me hold down that die cut. I do decide to use a larger piece for my sentiment and cut it down. And that's just because that's what tends to work out for me uh, to just trim off the edges as opposed to cut it down to the perfect size or width in this case. And so once I've trimmed off those edges, that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave you links to the products used in the video description below and some other videos to check out. Bye.